No. Suzanne, hi. Charlene said you were coming. What are you doing? Just reading. Oh. Well, one of those interior decorating papers. Thank you. My, you certainly are neat. I've never seen such a tidy room for a man who wasn't unnaturally close to his mother. I haven't seen Mom in years. You just pretty much have to be neat in order to keep track of things. Oh, well, I could never do that. Oh? I just throw my things any old where, and then Consuela, that's my maid, she picks them up and puts them away. Uh-huh. Except sometimes she has sort of a fit, you know, and throws everything out into the front yard, and then she gets the, the leaf blower and blows them all into the street. <laughs> well, I told her, fit or no fit, next time she does that, I'm packing her little bags and sending her home. Oh, where's that? I don't know, Paraguay, Uruguay, one of those Guay countries. <laughs> I mean, she tells me it's an uncontrollable seizure, but I mean, the last time my pig got into the act and swallowed a pair of pantyhose. And that's where I draw the line. You have a pig? Yeah. What about it? No, nothing. Go on. Well, you can imagine how upset I was. I mean, it was my last pair that had run in them. Plus the fact the pantyhose are not good for pigs. I mean, we had to rush Noel to the vet. Excuse me, Mr. Hedgecock. Ah, uh, lunch. Bring it in, please. Do you like lobster? I adore lobster. Yeah, I figured it. Now, go on with your story. Oh, well, so. We took Noel to the vet. Thank you. And, and this stupid veterinarian, he says to me, oh, don't worry, everything's gonna come out all right. And I said, well, I get your implication. And it's the most vulgar thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so, you know, I take Noel home, and sure enough, all my stuff. Suzanne, we were worried about you. It's after 5 o'clock. Did you get to see Mr. Hedgecock? Yes, I got to see him. Well, what's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. He's rich, charming, smart, funny, from a good family, not cheap, and he's crazy about me. What makes you think Danny Hedgecock's so crazy about you? Oh, for crying out loud, Mary Jo, I can tell when a man's interested in me. I have a sixth sense. Danny only has four. <laughs> this is just too weird for me. I'm not convinced. It isn't all in your imagination. Julia? He told me, he specifically asked for me to bring those contracts down. He found out my favorite food by calling my housekeeper and ordering us a special lunch. He kept me talking for three hours. And he asked me out to dinner in the symphony concert tonight. Well, he also says that he thinks I'm very smart. That's it, I'm convinced. He's got it bad. <laughs> Tell me about it. Now all I have to do is figure out a way to break this date, you know, without destroying him. Break the date? Why would you want to break the date? I only said yes, because it kind of caught me by surprise, you know, but then on the way home, I realized, of course, I just can't go out with him. Why not? I mean, I happen to be going with the sweetest, kindest, handsomest man in shoe leather, and I don't even look at other men anymore, of course, you know, but say, you know, if something were to happen, like I got hit on the head and temporarily got amnesia, you know, and Bill was away because he was on some secret government mission, I thought he was dead. Charlie! <laughs> Well, I mean, I'd be on Danny Hedgecock like a duck on a June bug. I mean, we're talking about a millionaire who spends his weekends working with underprivileged kids. I mean, we're talking about a Phi Beta Kappa from Vanderbilt who still knows why Hee Haw is funny. <laughs> I mean, men like that are just not walking the street. Well, that's good, because men like that be bumping into each other. <laughs> Well, I think we're all agreed that Dan Hedgecock has every good quality in the book. There's just one little tiny thing that's the matter with him. That he's blind. No, that he wants to go out with you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I cannot go out with every man that asks me. If I did that, I have a backed up waiting list from about 1972. <laughs> and I do not appreciate your comments on my personal and private life. And now, if you will excuse me, I have things to do. Oh, she knows she just slammed herself into the storeroom. Not to worry. Just as soon as she realizes that she's in a room where people actually work, she'll get out right quick. 